हाँ सर चालू करते हैं हाँ गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन दिस इज द फर्स्ट प्रोग्राम ऑफ डिजिटल साइकेट्री सब सेक्शन ऑफ आई पी एस वेस्ट जोन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस वेज दैट रिसर्च कैन बी ऑन गोइंग कोविड हैज टॉट अस अ ग्रेट डील ऑफ थिंग्स कोविड हैज टॉट अस हाउ वी कैन ट्रीट पेशेंट्स बींग अवे फ्रॉम पेशेंट्स ट्रीटिंग दम रिमोटली as well as there are dynamic researchers among us who have learned to master this art of doing research in a digital fashion as well uh, i invite uh, dr abhijit pai to introduce today's theme and uh, take the proceedings forward and introduce our uh, president uh, dr pai over to you thank you suyog Uh, good evening, everyone. I welcome you all for today's program, which is organized by Digital Psychiatry Subcommittee of Indian Psychiatric Society, West Zone. Uh, the theme for today's program is uh, effective use of digital technology in research. Uh, we all know that the research has shown and revolutionary updates over the years. Initially, people used to use a uh, proformas means a uh, paper and pen to collect the data. and nowadays they are using the google forms initially people used to use a large sheet of paper to make a master chart but nowadays there are apps and softwares excel sheets are available over a period of time there are various websites various uh, softwares the uh, smart search engines for the literature uh, search and then uh, uh, various applications for the data analysis uh, plagiarism check and even now the ai check Uh, various applications and everything has now invent uh, the inventions are so many that uh, we were uh, about to get used to it and now the things have come uh, come up like the uh, artificial intelligence and chat gpt so the pace with which the research has been updated and there is a revolution we as a researchers have not updated uh, ourselves to that extent and we have not matched uh, that pace in uh, that is because of not using the uh, digital technology effectively and today's topic is all about that how we can effectively use digital technology in research so as to make it more easier uh less time consuming it interesting so for this uh, we just thought of uh, when i thought about this topic i the only one name came in my mind that is dr abhijit patre whom i know since my under graduation days and uh, i think around 20 23 years before uh, the icmr projects concept was just uh, it just came and he was among those initial students who took uh, interest in those projects he completed and he had interest in research since those days he uh, opted his branch of community medicine by choice because he wanted to work at grassroots level in epidemiological context so uh, he is a right speaker right uh, i would say for this uh, theme and this topic and uh, i ensure all of you and a great evening and uh, and wonderful session and great enlightenment about the topic for this i welcome uh, dr uh, umesh nagapurkar sir president of indian psychiatric society west zone branch who is always been a support and motivating and uh, increasing person for all these programs i request nagapurkar sir to say few words about this talk and today's program nagapurkar sir yeah thank you dr abhijit and i welcome you all for this first inaugural session of our own uh, zoom platform because earlier we had to tie up with any pharma to have programs like this online programs but now because of efforts of uh, abhijit and website committee we are now having our own zoom platform and i must congratulate digital psychiatry sub committee dr suyog rakesh darpan and abhijit for having this wonderful theme which is very apt in the current digital era and i welcome you all and wish all the best i hope this is going to be a academic treat for all of us thank you uh thank you very much sir thanks for being uh, encouraging and supportive and uh, guiding us through uh, in the, this uh, program here and uh, always 
uh, today when we learn about the digital world of research there has to be someone who is going to maneuver the thing forward so uh, we have great two chair persons for today's session uh, dr vivek kirpekar sir uh, sir is a professor and head of the department of psychiatry at uh, nkp salve institute of medical sciences uh, nagpur and also uh, dr uh, sabu sir Uh, sabu sir is a professor and head department of psychiatry punjabra deshmukh medical college amravati so they are going to take the things forward from here including the introduction of our speaker as well as uh, they are the ones which will be instrumental in telling us the key concepts and key uh, addresses from this particular talk uh, kirpekar sir sabu sir over to you good evening everybody it is really a pleasure where technology has taken us i remember my days as a pg student and we used to write to who to get uh, some publications initially but then the who realized that we were trying to get free copies of publication and they stopped it then we had to approach instoc the uh, indian national documentation services at delhi to get lots of references and it was really a difficult task many a times we had to visit uh, mumbai medical colleges to get the right journals and uh, copies and getting xerox also was a difficult thing so there was lot of writing but today with advances in uh, the computer technology and the digital technology and the mobile technology with which the world of knowledge is in hands of everybody one note of caution uh, ai is coming up in a big way and uh, everybody is saying that though it is a very useful thing one has to be very very wary of a uh, lot of information that is there in different ai open ai and go ahead with whatever knowledge that we get i had experience working with abhijit dr abhijit pakhal we have dr abhijit fai the man behind this program today and we had very pleasant uh, memories working together so i welcome you all i welcome dr abhijit pakhre and everybody else and i am sure we are going to <laughs> this one hour of uh, i would like to briefly introduce uh, abhijit pakhre sir uh, dr pakhre is a additional professor of a community of family medicine at uh, aims bhopal he has done his post graduation from prestigious gs medical college and came hospital and thereafter he also pursued a master in medicine course in family medicine from cmc vellore as you can uh, very well see he has a great deal of research experience in epidemiological studies also been a uh, part of various task force uh, research groups and programs of uh, evaluation Uh, from public health new insights and publication uh, in indexed uh, journal uh, i welcome uh, dr pakhre to uh, take the things forward sir we uh, look forward to learn a great deal from you thank you sir over to you uh, dr abhijit pakhre yeah thank you very much for the invitation and i welcome all the participants and um, we will uh, proceed to the presentation i will share my screen now uh it is saying you cannot share the screen so kindly allow me to share the screen
Uh, it is saying you cannot start screen. Uh, Mr. Yes, sir, I am making you the host now. Yeah, okay. Please, please. Thank you. Once done, and just inform me. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. it is done. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. So now you can see the presentation. Yes, sir. So we will uh, briefly talk about uh, various resources available. And I have uh, organized this talk uh, as per the research uh, life cycle. That is, I will first tell some tools about literature search. Then I will tell some tools which will help in protocol writing, particularly sample size calculation tools. Then I will introduce some paperless data collection tools and then uh, certain tools for data analysis. And after that, tools for preparation of the manuscript, finding the journals and uh, certain other AI tools. So we will start with literature search tools. Uh, we know these tools, uh, PubMed, Google Scholar, and PsycInfo. These are our traditional tools. Now with AI, I'm not going into details of these tools. Uh, we all know that we have to find out the keywords, uh, there are Boolean operators and we can find uh, literature with that. But that was a traditional approach. Now uh, there is a tool called as lit maps. So what I will do is I will uh, show it live, how it looks and what we can do with it. So this is a website of uh, lit maps. This all the presentation is available as a website and I will share the link at the end of the presentation and that Website will remain live uh, until the free sites keep it live. So all the resources are there and that, that can be used as an uh, index. So this, what lead maps helps us in uh, finding the related citations and it generates the seed maps. For example, we want uh, articles related to depression and say um, postnatal depression and breastfeeding breastfeeding and postnatal depression okay so it, uh, breastfeeding i have to type uh, yeah okay so understanding relationship between uh, breastfeeding and postnatal i have clicked this article okay so uh, what this lit maps gives us is how many articles this article site and how many articles have used this article for their research purpose. So you will get a nice map. So what we can do is we can just click some articles and then we can discover related articles with it. So it gives more relevant articles to our article uh, or our question of interest. And this feature is not available in PubMed right now. We can uh, find out related articles. As far as I know, we can find out related articles for a given article. What it does is it combines two or three articles and it gives us uh, the uh, more relevant articles. And then you can click on that article and you will get the links. Like, uh, And these uh, size of the uh, bubble is relevant to number of citations of that particular article. So if I click on this article, this is a 1987 article published in 1987 and cited by so many articles. If I came come to this article, this is most recent one. So uh, in addition to PubMed, now we have this lit map tool, which gives us more relevant articles than the PubMed. So this is AI tool and uh, it also has other features you can search your name, your author name, and it will show the map of all the articles done by you. So this was one uh, resource additional to the existing resources. Now we will move to the next resource. Okay. I will see the website. Okay. So this was lit maps. Then uh, there is something called as research rabbit. Uh, 
I will just show their promo and then I will not demonstrate this. It is similar to uh, this thing. Only. So this is research rabbit. Uh, this was also similar to lit maps, which uh, we were discussing. We'll just minimize this and then we'll proceed further. Okay. Then <clears throat> this was about literature search tools. Uh, then there are many more tools, but these two I found more useful. You can uh, just Google AI tools for literature search and you will get many tools, but these two are uh, more relevant and precise. Then during protocol writing, one of the most common thing for which uh, students come to us or uh, other uh, uh, departmental collaborators come to us is how to calculate sample size. And we have heard about complex formula for uh, sample size and then uh, calculating sample size on your own becomes difficult. But now there are web-based calculators and I'm sharing you the one of the most comprehensive uh, calculator for sample size. Link is there. So you can see, uh, you can calculate sample size for to estimate single mean, compare two means, compare single proportion, that is comparing uh, sensitivity and specificity. Also, you can find sample size to calculate correlation coefficient. We can uh, calculate sample size to estimate intra-class correlation coefficient. Even for Cronbach alpha, we can calculate sample size. And many psychiatry and psychology research is about confirmatory factor analysis or exploratory factor analysis. So you can calculate sample size with that. Uh, additionally, I have shared some uh, links for previous presentation on sample size. It has a detail, uh, details about how to calculate sample size. Now I'm not going into details of that. This presentation, entire presentation with the link is available and it also has some explanations and formula and all. So that this can also serve as a resource for you. And then within that presentation, there are some how to guides uh, in which I have demonstrated calculation of sample size with these tools. Uh, for example, this is one of the guide sample size calculation uh, yeah sample size calculation to estimate one proportion here i have given some real life examples and i have shared you uh, the screenshots of how to do calculation for one proportion two proportion mean and it is explained as well so uh, for the sake of time i i will not demonstrate this live today but entire uh, sample size calculator along with guide for uh, calculations has been added to the resource okay so uh, and then there is one more uh, video lecture which uh, we have done for mycology uh, workshop and uh, that video lecture link also have uh, i have given to you very good evening so, to that all of you you can uh, today we are going to discuss how to calculate sample size I will just for close it okay so for sample size, I have given you one of the comprehensive calculator. There are uh, other calculators such as G power and you can just search online calculator, but this calculator will do uh, most of the things. And there are certain guides which I have uh, linked with you. Then uh, comes task of, uh, this was a tool for helping uh, writing sample size statement in your protocol. Now uh, we will move to the data collection phase. And in data collection phase, I will give around 10 uh, minutes for live demonstration of this paperless data collection design. One of the most common tool which we are aware is Google Form. 
but uh, in google form there are certain limitations about collecting types of data and particularly applying skip logics that is avoiding questions which are not relevant to it so uh, here one of the tool is cobo toolbox i will just click and open its link and uh, first and foremost important thing is this tool is free of cost and uh, it has uh, https secured servers and all anyone can open an account with cobo toolbox so uh, just you have to click uh, sign up and give, you have to give your email and you can open the account i have already created an account here so i will just log in and uh, in the next 4 uh, 5 minutes we will develop a questionnaire about awareness regarding chat gpt which is one of the tool which we will develop so once you log in you can just create a new project you have to uh, you can say i will build from the scratch and i will just name it as chat gpt awareness right and then i have to say uh, select sector i will say health services and i will say this project is from india this is a basic uh, thing which they require then here uh, form designer is ready we have to just click on this plus button first question i will enter is now i want to keep it as anonymous so i will start with age directly i will not enter uh, anything name something like that so i have added this question now you can see different types of questions can be added like you can have a uh, single select question multi select question you can ask a sentence or paragraph you can ask to enter a number you can ask to enter a decimal you can ask date you can take a photo you can record audio you can record video you can scan barcode and there are many kinds of question so for age our type of uh, age will be a number so i will just click number that question is added then next i will add gender now this is a question which has uh, for this presentation for this demo i will just take two options one is male i have to just add option here and then another is female then i will add next question i will say have you used chat gpt have you used chat gpt i am making a form live it is not done earlier here options will be yes and no i have selected select one i will just type yes i will just type no right then i am adding next question who told you who told you about chat gpt right again this is a single uh, first who told you first about chat gpt i will say no, because many people might have told so who told you first and i will keep two option two or three option friends or our kids or i will say other okay so now uh, we have added three four questions now what do you do with chat gpt what do you do with chat gpt chat gpt right uh there here we can do many th multiple things so i will click on select multiple and i will say uh, general chat i will say technical chat technical chat and one more thing i will say academic writing and i will keep option as other as well. and now i will add last question if somebody has not used chat chat gpt why you have not used chat gpt right so now i will uh, there there could be uh, multiple options but i will take uh, main option okay so yeah i will tell tell main reason okay instead of many reasons so i will again click on select one i will say have not heard about it i have not heard about it then i will say mm, i am not tech savvy i am not tech savvy okay and then i will say uh, ai is threat to ai is 
threat to humanity and therefore i don't use i don't use okay and then we can keep another option as other okay now this questionnaire is complete we have almost added three four questions we have to just click on save okay so this questionnaire is saved now it is up to this point it is uh, similar to google form okay what we will do is we will just preview the questionnaire here we can click on preview button and you will see what we have done okay so this chat gpt awareness it, it can uh, it shows age gender have you used chat gpt hold who told you first what do you do with chat gpt and why you have not used now our uh, target is this question why you have not used should not be visible if someone says i have used chat gpt and uh, these two questions should only be visible if someone says i have used chat gpt so we have to use skip logic there i will again click on edit so have you used chat gpt question is there below that who told you to who told you first about chat gpt is a question so what i will do is i will click on this setting button and then there is something called a skip logic i i will click on skip logic and i will click on add a condition now we have to select a question from the question list i will click on select question from question list and i will click on this question have you used chat gpt and if answer to that question is yes then only this question should be shown similarly i will apply the same skip logic to what do you do with chat gpt question i will click again on skip logic i will add a condition i will click on have you used chat gpt and i will click this as no right then for this question again i will add a skip logic and i will add a condition here and for this condition condition will be have you used chat gpt is equal to no here chat gpt use is has to be yes what do you do with chat gpt right so now i have added a skip logic i have saved it till now then there is something called as validation uh, validation is also available in the google form for example uh, our survey has we have to enroll persons who are above 18 years so i will add a validation criteria in age i have clicked on the setting button i have clicked on validation criteria i will click on add a condition and then we can say this question's response has to be more than more than or equal to i will click on greater than or equal to and i will say 18 okay and then it can give a error message and it can say that uh, please enter age more than 18 okay so now this is a very basic form we have created what i will do is i will close oh sorry uh, i will save it okay and i will close this thing and now i have to deploy this form so that people can use this form so to deploy this form you can see there is a deploy button i will just click on the deploy button and this form is now live and here you can see options for collecting data so this form can collect online as well as offline responses offline responses means even if somebody doesn't have internet and he has saved it as a bookmark it can collect the data and it will send when there is a internet so i will keep this as online offline there are another options also i will just click on online offline and i will copy the link okay i am copying the link and what i am going to do is now i am going to put this link live into the chat box uh, okay so here yeah, zoom no no ah chat okay so i am putting the link here and you will see the live form i am requesting everyone to click on this link and fill at least one form so that i can demonstrate how um, how data is coming here right so everybody is requested to please click on the link in the chat box and please fill the sum fill some data so that here number of zero submissions will change and we can see some submissions here so participants uh, if you are there and your screen is not idle please submit some data it should change have you got the link
this is a simple questionnaire still i have not got oh, oh seven submissions you can see live there are uh, seven submissions right so what we can do here is uh, here it shows the summary and it is showing uh, total seven submissions are there if i refresh there could be uh, more submissions now 11 submissions are there right now i will click on data and it will show the database right and now submissions are increasing so at this stage what i will do is i am showing you the data there are around 15 submissions and it has metadata as well right and from where it has come uh, everything is there uh, basic report you can see on the report tab okay basic report very basic report here uh, you can see it has summarized age mean age is 37 years median age is 33 years mode is 32 and standard deviation is 11.57 then there are 13 male who have responded and one female uh, have you used chat gpt seven said yes seven said no who told you about chat gpt friends others kids there are different kind of responses what do you do with chat gpt technical so very basic preliminary report has come okay and uh, this report will again if we refresh it will be uh, showing the most recent report right so this was a basic report descriptive statistics work is done if we want to download the data you can see a download button here i will just click on the download data button and uh, these are the export types i want a csv type of data or many uh, softwares require csv type of data i have clicked on csv and i will just export it so it will create a export here and it is processing and you can instantaneously download the data so i have downloaded data sorry uh, i will download it as excel or i will download the linked file okay i will download the linked file now linked file is coming as csv i have saved it in my download folder now my uh, spreadsheet is ready and you know with the spreadsheet i am ready for analyze analyzing it into the statistical software so this was uh, kobo toolbox this is free it has many uh, rich features you can have drop downs you can use a likert type of questions you can do calculations so for that you can just go on to the kobo toolbox website and you will find different resources for that another such tool is ep collect 5 i will just show you its screen this is similar to kobo toolbox this is also free and uh, and uh, you can deploy the form on android application as well as ios of application there is a app both for Kobo Toolbox as well as for EP Collect 5. So you can save it as an application in the uh, mobile and you can uh, also collect data during your clinical consultations if you are interested in uh, such kind of uh, forms and surveys. Right. So uh, now uh, I have briefed you about data collection tools. Now we will move to data analysis tools. So there are different kinds of uh, software and free softwares are also available. Uh, many times we already have a tables made and we have a, uh, numbers of uh, numbers in those tables or frequencies in those tables. And many times we just want to apply tests of significance. So there is one uh, tool which is known as open API. And this is a calculator, basically calculator. It can do uh, statistical test and all it also calculates sample size for example we want to calculate a row by column we want to do a, a test on two by three table so i will click on r by c and i will click on enter data here i will say i have two columns and i have three rows and it just gives you the column and row there are some explanations i am just putting the numbers 123, 125, 56, 78. I, uh, I have just randomly put some numbers. 
what it does is it will give you uh, the chi square test and p value now p value or use of p value has been discouraged but this is not a topic of today's talk so you will get your most desired p value here you can calculate t tests anova tests and all if you have a, a summary data already with you that is you don't want any statistical software to do so this serves as a calculator now uh, another tool which i have displayed was jasp so this is jeffrey's amazing uh, statistical program right and this is entirely free and it is a very powerful software it is based on r but uh, interface is graphic user interface so what i will do is i will just show descriptive statistics of data which we have collected i will open jasp on my uh, computer it is easy to learn as well and i have just opened jasp here what i have to do is i will uh, open a data from computer i will just browse where we have stored we have stored it in downloads so i have just clicked on that chat gpt data set now that data set has come here and i will just click on descriptives uh, you can see if i click on age and i just put it here you get the uh, data for age mean age is this much standard deviation is this much minimum maximum right now um, i want to split that age by gender so i will click on gender and i will click on split you can see difference in the may men and women mean age of men and women it gives some basic plots as well right it can give you distribution plot okay you you can get some distribution plot other statistics also you can get so uh, this descriptive statistics you can get if you want we want a t test you can just click on it we know age is a number so dependent variable is age and we want to see whether age was different in this thing so i think it has not come as number so we will uh, move uh, to the next resource so this jasp is free and it has all the advanced capabilities which we want t test mixed models then you can add modules for your reliability statistics modules for meta analysis modules for power analysis you can see reliability analysis then many uh, psychiatry and psychology researchers want this sem analysis structural equation modeling and mediation analysis everything is possible and most important and best thing is uh, it is free so uh, this was the uh, data and these were two data analysis tools open epa and jasp jasp is uh, jasp is sufficient for all the advanced analysis as well i think we are done with data collection and data analysis tools and now we will move to publication tools grammarly uh, is a paid software uh, many of you might be using i am not going to demonstrate it here and for plagiarism check their uh, best software is turnitin now we will be discussing about chat gpt and ai writing tools so this is a problem to teachers and uh, you know that uh, previously plagiarism tools were there now these plagiarism tools also have evolved now they are, they have become a ai writing detector tools so if you write something with chat gpt and submit what journals will do is journals will use uh, these softwares to detect whether it is a human written text or a machine written text so now plagiarism has a additional component of ai written text and that is also being detected through the softwares right now manuscript preparations we have done uh, literature search uh, collected data analyzed data and now we have written a manuscript now every journal has different uh, recommendations for formatting manuscript but there is something called as universal manuscript template and every journal adheres to that universal manuscript template which is given by international committee of medical journal editors so there are certain tools which help us in checking which uh, report writing guideline or manuscript guideline i have forgotten so there is one such tool called as r pubshare it is again a free tool i will click on its link i click on the link 
so now it is live it says that upload a manuscript and get free report now i have uploaded some manuscripts in it i will just log in uh, not now okay now what kind of report it shows i will just show you yeah setting my project okay okay so write and publish now there this was some uh, manuscript which we have checked with this glycemic control this is now published already published so it has different facilities uh, like get uh, whether it adheres to the all the guidelines and all right now it has recommended uh, it has uh, shown me different uh, re relevant articles to this relevant articles are shown when i upload this then it also helps in finding the journals where i can submit it will show me the report okay yeah in this report it will show me then get submission ready okay yeah this report uh, is being given by this tool right and uh, it shows that there are 530 issues in language. There are four issues in technical checks. I will just click on technical check and it will show me what are the issues. It shows that author details are not found language, whether it is inclusive or not. So basically uh, purpose of showing this is this is a tool. Once we have written the first draft of manuscript and we, we are uh, thinking to submit it, we can just get it checked on such websites. And it will tell us the uh, small, small things like conflict of interest statement is not written because many times we submit and then editor editorial board sends us back that these guidelines are not added to. So this ARP of sure, it is linked, uh, link is given there only. And there is something called as paper pulp. So I will just show its page. And what it does is it uh, says that we will edit it and it will increase your chance to um, get published. So it is a paid thing, but uh, for initial uh, some uh, days or uh, some number of words, it will be free. So this paper pal is there. You can uh, browse to its features at your leisure time. And uh, there must be this short video. Wouldn't it be great if you could enhance your writing with the click of a button? With PaperPal, you can. PaperPal is an AI writing tool tailored for academics and trained on millions of research manuscripts enhanced by Editage, a global leader in academic editing. PaperPal provides language suggestions using AI trained on millions of hours of human editing. I will with just focus, uh, fast forward it. You can go at Brief. your leisure. So this is uh, one of the tool, paper pal, and the ARP of sure I have told. And then there is a third tool. Just close it. Then there is third tool called as Penolep. It also checks uh, manuscript instantly whether they adhere to reporting guidelines or not. Right. Then uh, most common thing with where we get stuck is uh, journal search and in which journals to publish. So this is a site called as journal author name estimator. I have provided the link already. What we have to do is we have to paste an abstract and uh, abstract or title and then it will suggest the journals, right? So what we can do is uh, we'll just write uh, relationship of breastfeeding feeding and maternal depression. I have just uh, wrote some keywords. You can put entire abstract and you can put even entire manuscript. You can scramble it. It will not save your things and you can click on find journals. So uh, it will give you the relevant journals uh, where you can go to publish this article. So if you have abstract or your manuscript and if you put it, it will give you more relevant results and those will be sorted 
like that. So this is journal author name estimator and it will suggest where, which are the journals which you can target for. You can uh, go on individual journal publications and click on journal finder. If you click on journal finder, I've just written journal finder. You can say, uh, you can see elsewhere has a journal finder, Ville has a journal finder, Springer has a journal suggester, MDPI has a journal finder, Taylor and Francis has. So almost every uh, publishing group has a journal finder and in our pub sure I have shown you, it will also suggest journals, right? So now we will not go into details of that. Again, I have given a link for previous session on publi uh, publications and in that I have explained the tools which I have just shown, right? Then a reference manager, uh, there are uh, reference managers like Mendeley, EndNote, and uh, Zotero. Uh, 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 Zotero is free of cost. EndNote has some subscription charge, and Mendeley is also free. But uh, somehow I like Zotero. It is my personal choice. So uh, if we have time, uh, we can go on to demonstration of that. Otherwise, just a minute, I will come back. So do we have time to demonstrate Zotero? Someone please inform me. I am not able to see Let's this. Go ahead. Ah, uh, okay. So I will demonstrate Zotero. Uh, you can download, uh, again, as told, this is a free tool. You can download, it works on min, uh, Windows as well as it works on um, this thing, uh, Mac. So uh, what it does is, uh, what it does is it helps in organizing our references. So now uh, I will again demonstrate it live. I have installed it. And now suppose I go on PubMed. And again, I search the same thing, breastfeeding and maternal depression. Okay. So now it has given uh, references, right? And if I click on this, Now, uh, once you install the Zotero, uh, okay, this is a Zotero window. I have stored different citations. What I will do is I will create a folder for today's presentation. I will say uh, IPS here. Now this IPS folder is created. Now my task is to add a few references here and then use those references into my uh, introduction section of a uh, text. So now I have this article, I want to store it. So once you install it and install a plugin, you can see uh, this kind of sign. It shows that save to Zotero. I, when I click on it, now it will be saved to Zotero. Again, I will select few articles. Now this folder can be seen. If I click on this folder, I can select multiple articles from the search window. What I have done is I have selected those articles. I will just click on OK. So now it has stored all the articles into that IPS folder. Now I come back to Zotero and you can see the, those articles are already saved and if free public test, text is available, it is stored as PDF. I can just again go on that article from Zotero as well. So if I click double click there, it will go and that go on that article. So that uh, helps us in storing the relevant articles at one place. And now if suppose we want to write a manuscript. So what I will do is I will click on a word file. I will say manuscript and a manuscript. And now I will say that, um, okay, breastfeeding 
breast feeding is protective protective for maternal depression okay maternal depression many women prefer to uh, to this practice this i have written now i want to insert a reference here so what i will do is i will click here and i will click on uh, so this is a my this is my word file and when zotero is installed you can see a zotero tab here so what i will do is i will click on zotero i will click on add or edit citation and uh, different citation styles are there i will adopt to vancouver for now and you can see this i will go on classic view i will go on ips and i want this article to be cited i have clicked it it has inserted here now i want to insert its reference so what i will do is i will enter and i will click references i will type references and then i will click on add or edit bibliography here so it has added that article now i want to insert another reference here so i will click here i will click on add or edit citation i will click on i i can write here as well now, now i know my author is miao so this miao comma i want the second one e a i if i write the few words of author which i want to cite it will come i will just click on it and you have you can see that the references have come and uh, listed in the vancouver style now if you want to change the style it can also be changed through document preferences now i want instead of uh, vancouver i want it as american medical association style so it will automatically change right so this referencing um, is quite uh, scary for many of the researchers and they are uh, particularly beginners are scared in writing the references in uh, writing references because if some reference is deleted or some uh, revision has been told by reviewer then entire numbering gets uh, disturbed but if you use this uh, reference manager tools then uh, these uh, problems can be taken care of because uh, you can just delete that reference and you can just refresh and your entire thing will become uh, up to date again so zotero and then uh, this is not a twitter is not a reference manager but uh, twitter is also a great platform for digital research uh, for uh, twitter is a great technology for research if uh, you are using twitter for academic purpose you can uh, get to go ahead with many collaborations because many uh, great academicians are available on twitter and they respond to your requests and queries uh, through messages and there uh, nowadays there is a trend to publish briefs about the current research on twitter so you can find out who are the persons there uh, in your field which are on twitter and you can join twitter and it can be considered as a resource now master blaster this chat gpt and how much to use it it can do entirely uh, it can do almost many things it uh, you can use it for editing what you have written you can use it for brainstorming uh, the outline of the article you can um, use it you can use it as a reviewer what you can do is you can put your article in the chat gpt and you can ask it to critically review it and suggest uh, changes it does that it will help you in data analysis as well if you are using excel it will help you writing formulas in excel if you are using r or python it can help you writing code for r and python if you are stuck at any place it it is a new uh, way of search previously we used to do google search now you can do a chat gpt search but as i have told you now there are ai uh, writing tool detectors right so ai tool writing detectors so we cannot use it to write article you can definitely get a rich feedback from it you can use it to revise your draft but you cannot use it to entirely write your article 
now there this is one more uh, tool which is called as jenny.ai what it does is it completes the sentences it is apt for academic writing it completes sentences it also uh, inserts citations so at your own uh, place at your own pace you can uh, browse this website jenny.ai and you will be able to see different use cases of that so uh, as promised entire uh, resources you can use this presentation as a library uh, or a library for links for various resources this will be available to you uh, on the web address and you can just uh, scan this qr code share it on uh, whatsapp to your uh, your number only so that you can again go back to that link i think i am done and uh, will close from mind if there are any specific queries and if time permits we can take those thank you dr abhijit uh, for a nice presentation uh, there are few questions which have been there but first i would like to uh, put some comments from my side my uh, uh, in our institute and other places where we all the students who submit their thesis and other things they usually go through the different process like scientific review then ethical and other things and most of the times it is usually even for statisticians they approach to calculate the sample size and other things definitely if they can use these tools and other things it will be helpful for them uh some questions which have come up in the chat box they are yes. mostly about the qualitative analysis so if there are any free tools are available for qualitative analysis data analysis yes sir for qualitative analysis also there are tools Uh, basically all the large language models what they are doing like chat gpt is basically crunching the text right so there are uh, tools for qualitative analysis as well and uh, these tools are uh, available uh, through uh, different websites you have to just search on that i have personally not used a tool but definitely there are tools for qualitative analysis i cannot specifically name a tool for qualitative analysis right now i can search and put it on the website okay mm. another question uh, which is usually actually related to that only ki uh, how do you do qualitative analysis okay sir qualitative analysis is entirely a, <laughs> another talk and basically uh, there are different ap different approaches for qualitative analysis like one is grounded theory approach or another is framework approach um, uh, but i think uh, we can have a separate talk and i am not the good resource person uh, for uh, detailing about qualitative analysis i can talk about quantitative analysis a lot but i can suggest a resource person for qualitative analysis okay okay so take home message for post graduates uh, sir has asked uh, nagapur sir has asked so take home message is now uh, we have uh what we can say uh boosters available with us uh, for at each stage and there are different tools uh but uh, basic thing that is uh understanding the concepts uh, behind uh the dissertation thing which is put in your course that is how to frame the question how to do literature search how to uh, design the studies how to collect the data those things uh, these tools will facilitate or accelerate the uh, process or increase the efficiency but those things had to be done uh, meticulously uh, by following the due procedures and they should not use uh, what you can say uh, recently available uh, ai writers or something like that because then they will not understand the nitty gritties of the research but uh, the tools which we have discussed can be used to accelerate yeah. uh one more question from my side uh, dr abhijit yes, uh we usually uh, the university sends us the dissertation for checking up for yes. evaluation of the th uh, uh, dissertations yes, so sir. are there any tools available for evaluation to help the evaluation process more easier um because yes. it becomes very difficult and tedious to go through all those big a uh, thesis dissertations of more than 100 and 200 pages 
and uh, going all through everything so is there anything which can be helpful sir uh, there are uh, tools uh, like there is one tool called as size space on which you can upload a pdf and then you can ask questions uh, and that will uh, crunch that pdf and it will respond so in a way you can upload that thing and you can ask the critically re uh, critical review questions and it will answer there is something called a size space i will add it in the resource down the line yeah thank you uh thank you uh, everybody uh, sir uh, a quick question yes uh very uh, what we are uh, currently in process of we see a lot of uh, patients and we believe that ehq9 which is a simple instrument which yes. can generally be used uh, to uh, screen patients so what we have decided is we are going to make a google form out of it put a qr code and patients can fill that uh, so do you think this uh, obo toolbox will be a better tool than google form when it comes to that yeah i i was planning to demonstrate phq9 actually on obo toolbox that okay. is that is much better i will just share you the i i just began that developing that form but then i thought uh, time will be less and uh -huh. because of that so this co uh, cobo toolbox will be more relevant because you can have a calculation thing in google uh, form you do not have a calculation thing right so uh, you will uh, get a automatic classification if you use cobo toolbox okay and what we were thinking was uh, when it comes to research you want to see the uh, complete picture so let's say 100 patients that are there and you may want to see the complete picture of 100 patients Yeah. however in clinical practice you are interested in that one person and individual response that an individual gives yes so does cobo toolbox is more helpful when it comes to that is my question sir uh yes uh, you can give it like i have just started developing it it will be displayed mm -hmm. something like this right and what you can do is uh you can ask your patient you can just you can put it in hindi as well or marathi as well mm -hmm. you can ask your patient to scan a code and fill that questionnaire okay and it will classify down the line if i put a calculation logic okay i am i uh, if you put a calculation logic like here i have put a calculation logic that phq1 plus phq2 uh, like that i will write up to phq9 okay mm -hmm. and then we can have a classification that score is greater than this this person uh, likely has uh, to be further inquired for, for uh, right so that person can uh, scan in the clinic uh, fill the questionnaire it will send it will come to you you uh, if you have asked to enter the registration id you can have his record stored and uh, he, uh, that will be instantaneous so that that will be much better than google form okay sir uh, another question uh, regarding ai now ai has gone too far reviewing article even critically uh, reviewing article at that even starting article from searching references etc etc yes have we crossed the uh, paywall yet uh, have you crossed the what paywall paywall there are sites with uh, on, uh, it is named as something paywall Ten feet, ten feet height, or something like that. Now I cannot tell those sites uh, in the presentation. Yes, this is a recorded presentation. But there are sites uh, that is known as twelve feet or ten feet, something like that, and uh, they give you the article. Okay, okay. So AI has finally breached Pebble. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any anybody has any questions? so it appears sir uh, your uh, presentation was a uh, very comprehensive you have covered most of the things and uh, uh, solved most of the queries you have given a new perspective to people who are trying for research especially it is very helpful for post graduates who are starting the research so things are uh, more in perspective the laborious and the manual work of searching articles Uh, writing about it going each and uh, every article going through the citation and uh, checking from there to the next article so now ai has facilitated much of that work 
i believe uh, this will be a great help uh, for most of the post graduate uh, students as well as people like me who are not uh, uh, great at uh, technology so it is uh, uh, definitely a booster for me thank you very much sir for uh, taking your time out and uh, enlightening us on this uh, particular topic i would uh, also like to uh, thank our chairperson uh, professor kirpikar sir and uh, professor sabu sir for uh, handling this session uh, so well uh, i would also thank uh, our uh, president of ips west zone uh, dr umesh nagapurkar sir and uh, our secretary dr dhananjay ashtukar sir and similarly the convener of digital psychiatry sub section uh, rakesh bedgudri and dr darpan ko and uh, of course our very own uh, dr abhijit pai uh thank you everyone uh thanks for spending your time your uh, evening with us uh, about learning uh